Welcome back to Tempo Control. Since this is a Pokemon episode for Pokemon Tournament coming out this week, and Pokemon Black and White is one of my favorite soundtracks of all of them, really, it's time to count down what I think are the Pokemon generations in order of worst to first. Number six, Generation One, Red, Blue, and Yellow. Okay, look, Gen 1ers, I know it's trendy to look back on these games fondly, especially with the recent eShop releases of these games. It's great that everyone's going back to play them. But the fact of the matter is that these games are not as good as everyone remembers. I'm sorry, the Pokemon games have just gone through too many changes since that initial release almost 20 years ago. Yes, of course it was a solid foundation for these games. Of course it had to be good to make it such a big phenomenon. But people generally gloss over a lot of the flaws that Generation 1 had. You had things like rap spamming, where if you use an attack like rap and you were faster than your opponent, or heaven forbid a wild Pokemon was faster than you, they could just lock you down and spam that and, and beat you. It's, it was ridiculous. You also had the OP, unbeatable psychic type that really had no weaknesses at all. Ghost? Yeah, the only ghosts were part poison types, so psychic super effective. And then bug types and other types of these kinds of attacks for some reason didn't have the same type attack bonus at all, so psychic types were pretty much unbeatable. And what was up with the nonsense of you're frozen forever and it takes a whole turn to wake up from sleeping? You can't wake up and then do an attack like you could in later generations, no. No, it, it was ridiculous. So a good foundation for Generation 1, but not great games. Number 5, Generation 6, X and Y, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. X and Y had a lot of great additions. It was the first 3D compatible game with 3D graphics and 3D models of the Pokemon. You had the player search system. You had Super Training, which officially recognized EVs. You had Mega Evolution. And you had the introduction of the Fairy type. And then Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire expanded on that even more. You had the Delta episode, which expanded on the Ruby Sapphire Emerald story. You also had Latios and Latias riding you around and taking to Mirage spots to catch legendary Pokemon. And the PokéNav Plus, to have those silhouettes on each route show you what Pokemon were there, that's the greatest motivation to have us really catch them all that I've seen in a long, long time. But let's face it, this game had significant performance and frame rate issues. You also had Sky Battles and Horde Encounters, which really weren't that great. The story was pretty terrible, actually. You know, too many rivals, Team Flare, just not good enough at all. Pokemon Ami can kind of be hit or miss, I guess. And then Cosplay Pikachu, just terrible. Number four, Generation 5. Black and White, Black and White 2. For a generation that was supposed to be a reboot of Pokemon, it did a lot of good things right. It had that direct sequel instead of the third game, which tied back to black and white. I mean, that was really cool. You had the changing battle music. You had the infinite uses of TMs, the animated sprites in battle. You also had a just generally higher difficulty of the game, which was a nice change of pace. And also a more mature story and a new endgame design, which was really quite clever. But overall, I think Generation 5 is just too forgettable at times, which is a shame. It tried to be too philosophical at times with truth and ideals, and while I appreciated that, I think that went over a lot of kids' heads. You had triple battles and rotation battles? That's overkill. That is way too much, and it did not work out at all. You had musicals also, which was probably one of the worst extracurricular activities that you could have put in the Pokemon games. Really, I felt it was just trying to stretch out the end of the DS life cycle, and you could really feel it reach its limits. Number three, Generation 2, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. These are the perfect sequels, taking everything that was great about the first one, making it even better, adding new features, and tying back to the first game in a really memorable way. So many great additions to Gold, Silver, and Crystal. You have breeding, shiny Pokemon, female trainer in Crystal, you had the experience progress bar in Battle, which was awesome. Pokemon could hold items, you had the Steel and Dark type to kind of counteract the overpoweredness of Psychic in Generation 1, and you had the splitting of the special stat into special attack and special defense. But there are some unfortunate flaws with Generation 2. They added new Pokeballs, they added way too many new Pokeballs. It was also still really held back by the Game Boy technology at the time. I mean, not even Game Boy Advance, but Game Boy. 
and it also really just lacks the features that later generations would add into the game. Number 2. Generation 3 – Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and Fire Red and Leaf Green. Oh man, so many great improvements in Generation 3. First of all, it established how Pokémon are kind of created on a data level with the addition of natures and abilities and a refinement of the IV and EV system. It's what allowed these Generation 3 Pokémon to be brought forth to future iterations of the game. Not only that, but you had distinct story and villain differences between the two games in Ruby and Sapphire. That was a first. You had double battles. You had running shoes. And it was, strange to say, actually the first kind of game platform that allowed users to kind of create their own ROM hacks and create their own custom Pokemon games. Have you ever played Ash Gray? It's pretty awesome. It's a game based on the events of the anime. And then you had Fire Red and Leaf Green, which were the first Pokemon remakes that took a past generation and applied the new generation standards to it. So Fire Red and Leaf Green, the definitive versions of Pokemon Red and Blue. You have to play them. There were definitely some downsides to Generation 3 though. They took all those Pokeballs from Generation 2 and added even more Pokeballs. It just feels so unnecessary for a lot of them. And then you also had the contest mode, which, yeah, it worked out well in the anime, but it was not that fun to play if you asked me in the game. And number one, Generation 4, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Generation 4 really refined what made the Pokemon series great, and if it had stopped there, personally, I would have been happy with it because I think that's the best generation. First of all, with the introduction of Wi-Fi on Nintendo DS, it really opened the game up to the world because you had Wi-Fi trading and you had Wi-Fi battling, just people across the world able to communicate with their love of Pokemon. You also had Pokemon moves that changed if they were physical or special based on the move itself and not what type it was. So for example, before Generation 4, let's say you have Thunder Punch and you have Thunder Bolt. Both of them used to be special moves because they were electric types, and so they were dependent on the special stat or the special attack stat of the Pokémon. Well, in Generation 4, Thunder Punch became a physical move dependent on attack, and Thunder Bolt became a special move because it was dependent on special attack. So that really changed for all the moves, and it was a big game changer. You also had connectivity with games past to import GBA Pokémon into the DS game. You had connections with the Wii, I mean, playing Pokémon Battle Revolution with these games on your DS, it was great. Also, you could record your battles that you played with people online with the Versus Recorder in Platinum. Oh, and don't even get me started on Heart Gold Soul Silver. Taking one of the best game foundations in Gold and Silver, but it was you know flawed by a lot of things in Gen 2, but taking those Gen 3 and Gen 4 refinements over time and making what I think is one of the definitive Pokemon games of all time. Some downsides of Gen 4, I guess, you know, they had Super Contests, which really didn't make contests any better, and Team Galactic was a pretty weak villain, let's just say that for Diamond and Pearl. So I know this is a bit long in the tooth, but I love the Pokemon games, and I hope maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree with me in this order of what generation is the best, so let me know your order in the comments below, I'd love to hear your opinions.